Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Springtime Melody and I'm going to be sipping on a little Pinot Noir. And if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so what I'm going to be using for my materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, cobalt blue, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, Mars black, green oxide, and chrome yellow. Of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round brush, and I have a number one round brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through the painting process. There is down below a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the palette and all that good stuff. It's down there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are drawing ourselves an outline for the piano keyboard area. Keyboard area, piano keys. We're not just doing the keys, we're doing the whole area. So piano keyboard area, <laughs> something like that. So I'm gonna use my pencil. I'm gonna give you a couple of markers and we're gonna connect those markers and we'll have a basic shape that we'll be able to color in. So on the right hand side of my canvas, I'm gonna come up about a quarter of the way and make myself a little bit of a mark. And to know where that quarter way mark is, if you visually kind of pick your halfway point on the canvas, and then just go about halfway between that and the bottom of your canvas, that'll give you about a quarter of the way. I'm gonna come down to the bottom corner and I'm gonna come up maybe about an inch, inch and a quarter maybe, and make myself another little mark. Then I'm gonna come on the left-hand side of my canvas, and I'm gonna come up maybe, I would say about two, two and a half inches, make myself a mark here. Bottom right-hand corner along the bottom edge, I'm gonna come over maybe about an inch, inch and a half, make myself a little bit of a mark in through here. And then I have two more marks that I'm gonna be making in through here. So these are, they're about two inches apart, and I would say they're about two inches above this marker. So if you go about two inches up and maybe about a quarter of the way into your canvas or a fifth of the way in, you can make yourself a little marker here and then go about two inches to the left of that and make yourself another marker there. So you should have six marks, two, three, four, five, six. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this one to this one with kind of a curved type line. I'm going to come over like this and then just up like that. Something like that. I'm going to do the same thing with this, these two top markers, only this is going to have a little bit more of a wave to it. So I'm going to come down in through this direction, kind of come over and then give myself a little bit of a wave type mark coming in through here. And you're just gonna bring it to the edge of your canvas. You, this little marker here, that was just that was just to guide you. You can erase it if you want to, but you wanna bring it all the way over to the edge of your canvas. Then I'm gonna um, connect this marker to this one down here with another wave, but it, you don't want it to be too, too wavy. Just a gentle little wave will, will be fine. So I'm gonna come up a little bit, kind of come down towards the bottom of my canvas 
and then give myself another little bump up in through here. And I'm not gonna close this section off here and you'll see why in a minute, but this is all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. So we're gonna use our large brush for the next step so you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the base coat for the keys. So I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using brown and white paint. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have the, this top portion lighter than the bottom portion. So I'm gonna be using mostly white on my brush with just a little bit of brown on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna paint them in. I don't need it to be anything other than just a light tan color. It doesn't have to be any particular brush stroke. When I do get up into this area, I left it open because I want these keys to kind of merge in with the grass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of bring this paint up in a messy fashion. So I have almost a broken line at that, at that edge right in through there. And I'm gonna bring this right to my pencil, my pencil mark, and I'm gonna get the entire area covered in. So if you have some spots that are lighter or darker than others, that's totally fine. If you have it you know, darker up top and lighter down at the bottom, that's again will work because we are giving the impression that this is outdoors. So there is gonna be highlights and shadows from various objects around the, the, the landscape that we're gonna be doing. So again, if you have lighter spots and darker spots, that's fine. You could certainly pre-mix yourself a, a light tan color if you wanted to, but I'm just kind of mixing it on my canvas like this. And then this bottom section, I'm gonna be using the same thing, brown and white, only this time I'm using more brown. So it's gonna be a little bit darker down in this bottom section. And then we will be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat for your keyboard on here, all you're gonna need to do is wash and dry this brush and you will be ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using brown, blue, and white. And I'm going to be alternating the colors on my brush for the majority of my sky until I get up into this upper right hand region where I want it to appear that the sun is over there. So I'm gonna have that the lightest. So I'm gonna start with all three colors on my brush, a little brown, a little blue, and a little white. I'm gonna be using this long kind of crisscross type motion for my brush stroke. And you might want yours to be lighter or darker than mine. You might want yours to have a whole bunch of blue in it or a whole bunch of white to make it look a little bit softer. Whatever works for you is totally fine. The only time I'm not gonna really use this um, soft left to right motion is when I get to here, which is the meeting point for the keyboards. That's where I'm gonna just kind of pull that color down into that section a little bit so I can get those to look almost like they're merging into one another. And as I go through this process, I'm not really using a ton of paint on my brush, but I, I wanna use enough to make it so I can move the paint. So you do want it, you don't want your brush to be too, too dry during this process. So as you, as you go about this, if you feel that your, your paint is drying on you too fast and you're not able to get the colors to blend together, you might wanna use a little bit more paint on your brush. And again, I'm just kind of using this long left to right crisscross type motion so I can get the illusion of maybe some gentle clouds flowing by, floating by on a nice, beautiful spring day or summer day. I think, I think I've designated this painting to be a spring painting because it's got daffodils in it. And daffodils in the region where I live definitely come out in the springtime. So this to me is, is a spring painting. So you can certainly have yours um, resembling 
summer or spring, whatever, whatever is visually appealing or speaking to you, that's totally fine. And then as I get up towards this upper region, I might, you might find that I, I go back into a previous section as it's drying. Just, you can see I'm kind of floating around my, my canvas at this point because I like to keep the paint I like to keep manipulating the paint as it's drying. So if it's, if I want it to be a little bit smoother, I'm watching it dry, I'm watching my paint dry, <laughs> which is always a fun thing to do. Um, but as, as it's drying, I can say, ooh, I can, with a gentle touch, I can, I can soften that a little bit more. But sometimes if you go about trying to get all these, um, colors to do exactly what you want while they're too wet sometimes what happens is you just end up mushing them all together and it all ends up as one solid color so that's why i like to just kind of manipulate them as they're drying and that way i can really control what's happening as i'm going over towards this right hand side i'm going to stop picking up my colors for a minute the brown and the blue and i'm going to get this to go really really light almost white or just about fully white up in this top right hand corner to again give the illusion that the sunshine is up in through there i still have remnants of my blue and brown on my brush so you can see it is definitely um, still coming off as as a little soft softness in the color so again you can certainly get this to be as dramatic or as soft as you want it to be. I'm getting mine to, of course, be a little bit darker down at the bottom, lightest up here in the top right-hand corner. And I'm just gonna kind of keep manipulating this and working this paint as it's drying. Maybe if I want a little bit lighter area to resemble like a cloud going by, I can certainly tweak that a bit. But I am going to be, uh, let's see, what am I gonna use for the next brush. Actually, we're going to be using our pencil for the next step. So once you've got your sky on here, you can put your large brush away. I think I want, I'm going to keep tweaking mine just a little bit more here. Um, once you've got your sky on here, you can put your large brush away, take out your small or take out your pencil. And of course you can keep tweaking your sky as much as you want to and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are drawing the line for the white keys on the piano. So I'm gonna be using my pencil and I'm gonna give you a couple of markers and then we're just gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, hopefully we'll have a nice equally spaced um, set of keys. Now, mind you, this is kind of on the surreal side. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not even gonna use any real math to create these, but I do know that I want my keys to look a little bit bigger on this side and um, to have a lot of perspective throughout the whole thing. So they're all in essence gonna start up in through here and then they're gonna travel on this piano hill of sorts. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of markers. I'm going to make myself a mark between here. So I'm going to do one marker in through there. And then I'm going to do another marker about halfway between here and here. So you can just eyeball this. It'll be a little bit to the left of, he of here. So maybe a little bit to the left of even here and just go straight down. That should put you in the ballpark. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to create the bottom markers first. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring a vertical line straight down. Then I'm gonna eyeball about halfway between here and here. So for me, that's gonna be about here. And I'm gonna make myself another vertical line. Then I'm gonna go halfway between here and here, make myself another line. Halfway between here and here, make myself a line. I'm going to repeat that step over here. So halfway between here and here is about here. Halfway, halfway. Now I need a couple of other markers. I'm going to put a mark at the end. Excuse me, not here, not here. It's going to come a little bit up from this little corner here. So somewhere about here, I'm going to have another marker. And then over on the right hand side, I'm gonna come up from this corner here 
maybe about, I would say a half of an inch, make myself a mark, and then a, a, almost halfway between here and here, I'll make myself another mark. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect all of these bottom markers to this central point up top. So I'm gonna start with my center one, which is right here, and I'm gonna connect it to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of using this curve as a visual guide. So I'm gonna start here and give myself just a little bit of a curve, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue that process. So the number of key bottoms I have, they all have to kind of converge up in through here. So I'm gonna try and kind of equally space it but it's got to gradually get larger as it comes out and touches the end of the key. So something like this. And you'll get your, your rhythm. You might have to erase once or twice to um, get this to look exactly the way that you want it, but it is definitely a fun process that um, is going to give us a lot of interesting elements to this painting. So we're gonna go one more in through here, something like this. And you can see I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sketching my lines. For me, when I, when I do a step like this, it's almost easier to sketch it as opposed to going one straight um, mark. I don't know why, that's just the way my brain works. <laughs> so I'm still up here. This one's almost straight down. If I can give it a little bit of a curve, great. If not, no worries. And then I'm gonna start curving them kind of in the opposite direction because I've got, my hill is going in the opposite direction. So something like this. Yeah, this is, this is fun. I like doing lines. I like making these graphic kind of, uh, paintings. I've got a couple of paintings that I've done in the past that are, I think I want this one to be a little bit straighter, that are of more of a, an illusion kind of basis like this one is, but they're, they're much more intricate. So there you go. You saw me, you saw me making a correction in through there because I want these to look like they're coming out pretty much in a similar direction and equally kind of spaced at the bottom. So here we go. I've just got this one left to go. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your key, your white key lines in place, you can put your pencil away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the lines that we just drew in pencil. We'll be painting those with our small brush and brown and black paint. So how I'm gonna do this is I am gonna use a little bit of watered down paint so that way I can have a little bit smoother of a line. So I'm gonna have black and brown on my brush and I'm also gonna put a touch of water on my palette as well. So that way I have a nice fluid consistency to my paint. And all I'm really gonna be doing is painting lines on top of the pencil marks that I just had. And I'm not gonna be pressing terribly hard so my lines stay on the more narrow side. And you can see it, I, I get to go pretty far because I have the water on my brush. It holds the moisture within my brush which allows me to get several of these paint strokes on at the same, without reloading my brush. So I'm gonna do those ones. I am also gonna do one line underneath um, the top of the keys versus the side of the keys. So again, I just have the watered down black and brown on my brush, and I'm just following the seam between these two colors. So black, brown, a little bit of water, and following this seam. So I have a shaky hand for those of you who have not seen me paint before, and I tend to resolve that issue by resting my hand on my, um, on my easel or my pinky on my canvas. So if you are attempting this type of step and you have a shaky hand as I do, that can certainly help to um, alleviate that, that shake that you might have. So again, I'm just kind of following my pencil marks, try not to press too, too hard so I can have a nice slender line. And if you end up having 
a line that's a little bit wider than you had anticipated, you can certainly um, narrow it down after it dries. You can come back with some of this base color that we did and just thin out those lines if you want to. And this takes me a couple minutes just because I do tend to go a little bit slow. So I get my lines exactly where I want them to be. And if you miss your pencil mark, if you go outside your pencil mark a little bit, you can wait for the paint to dry and then just erase any exterior um, pencil marks that you might have that are visible. And these lines don't have to be terribly perfect. We will, like I said, have um, a opportunity if you need to, to make any little corrections, but I'm just going one line at a time. I like to keep my eye on the prize, which is the other um, end of the particular line. So if you if you find yourself not going smoothly along it, what one of my tricks is to keep my eye on the on on the place where I'm going. So for me, I start at one end of the line, and I am constantly checking where the end of my line is. So that way my brush just kind of naturally flows in that direction. And if you want your lines lighter or darker, you can certainly adjust it with the quantity of um, black versus brown on your brush. The brown will tend to be a little bit more translucent um, and see-through. And of course the black will definitely be darker. These are meant to look like the little crevices or creases between the keys so they should theoretically be pretty darn dark but if yours if you want yours to be a little bit on the lighter side just for aesthetic purposes you could certainly use a little bit more brown as opposed to the black so i've just got a couple more to go here and again using brown and black at the same time on my brush with a little bit of water and you could also, if your lines are a little bit too wide for you, for you visually, you could certainly utilize a skinnier brush if you wanted to, or sometimes a brush with longer bristles will help you to get a more slender and consistent line. So that, those, are, those are tips for you um, to getting the more slender lines. And of course, my biggest tip is just just don't press hard because <laughs> that's going to be where we definitely get some wider lines. And when I run out of paint in the middle of a um, in the middle of a line, you might know you might have noticed that I just did it a, a moment ago. I will end up kind of starting um, a ways back in the line as opposed to trying to restart that line at the end. So like I'm running out of paint there. So when I go to I reloaded my brush and I'm going to start a little bit in the line. That will help me to keep more of a consistent um, edge to that line so it doesn't look like that line has been broken midstream. And then I'm not going to do this top edge because that's going to be the top of the key. So I'm going to leave that one um, without a dark line on it. And then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got these lines established you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what i'm going to be doing for the next step is i'm painting the black keys i'm going to be using my small brush and i'm going to be using black and white paint so how i'm going to first do this is i'm going to lay out where i want each key to be and oops <laughs> I'm gonna throw my brush while I'm at it, I guess. And I'm gonna have my keys larger on this left-hand side and smaller as they go to the right-hand side. So I do know a little bit about the placement of the black keys, that there's three together, then there's a space, and then there's two together. So I'm gonna try and lay mine out similarly. I'm gonna start with this one in through here. And this one is gonna straddle across this line about equal distance on either side. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna start maybe, maybe somewhere about here and go something like that. And then this one in through here, the next one is gonna be, I wanna leave a little bit of a space between this one and that one. And I'm, I want this to kind of go up 
you know, and follow the, the wave of the, um, of the bottom that I have. So I'm going to do something like this. This is going to be about equal distance on the left and the right as well. Then I'm going to skip one of these lines and then I have three smaller ones in through here. I'm going to do one, two, three, but I'm going to do my center one first just so I make sure I don't go too, too far um, over on either side. So this one's going to go about half on one side and half on the other. At the one on the right goes a little bit more um, on the right hand side of this line and this key on the left goes a little bit more on the left hand side of the key. So these three lines should be about equal um, width from one to the next. And then I'm going to skip a line and then I'm going to do the two over here. So these I'm going to start to get to go up my up my little piano hill a bit. So I'm going to go something like this, something like that. Those might have been a little bit close together. So I'm going to just e get one of them to erase a little bit. I just want a little bit more space between those two. I just am taking a brush with a little bit of water on it just so I can have a little bit more space between those two. And that this is an easy fix too when you when you um when your paint is still a little wet, you can just add a touch of water to it. Acrylic paint is quite pliable when it's still wet. I'm going to skip a spot here and my next one is going to go in through here. We're just going to kind of see the the edge of this one that's far off in the distance there. So now I'm going to give them each a um, the front profile of them. And again, this one's going to be bigger on this side. So the profile of these keys is, oh, it's like a triangle, but it's flat at the top. So I am going to do this left side like this. Then I'll go ahead and do the right side like this. And then I'll square off the top. And I'm going to do that to all of them. This one I wanted to be a little bit higher than this um, area here. So that kind of sets the stage. And then they're all going to kind of progressively get a little bit smaller. So this one I'm going to go like this. And I'm not paying attention to the um, horizontal or the separating lines that I have in between because those are going to be hidden behind the keys themselves. So as long as you just keep the um, shape consistent with the, with these areas that's going to help to keep your um, the perspective on these keys pretty good and again they don't have to be perfect so don't feel the need to make them you know like photo realistic we're just going for something that is fun and interpretive. We're going for a little surrealism here. So these are going to probably curve a little bit on this side. So I'm going to make mine a little bit tipped. So it looks like they're pointing kind of towards the, the object up there, but you don't have to do that that way if you don't want to. So again, something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this one. I don't even have a profile to, but I know that I need a top to give myself some guidance as I'm, as I'm bringing the key in. So I'm going to color them all in with black. All of these sections are going to be colored in with black. And then once I color them in, we're going to put a little um, corner marker on each one of them. So that way when we, have the key traveling up in through there, we'll be able to visually make sure we see each key independently from one another. So this is a really um, a, a simple way to get perspective on, on objects that are sitting next to each other and to allow for the visual um, cues for when people are looking at it to be able to see one piece from the other. So I'm going with my front shape that I know is facing the viewer. And once I have that established, then again, I will give myself some um, markers or visual reference points. So when I go to create the rest of the key itself, I will have, I won't, I won't lose this perspective that we're doing. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to wipe it off on my paper towel and I'm picking up black and 
white on my brush at the same time. So my brush is dirty and I've got black and white. I'm going to put a marker on the top and on the side where I have my light source. So my light source is up here. So I'm going to go top and right for these keys. These keys will be top and right and then as I get into these ones they might go top and left. So here we go. I've got black and white on my brush. So I'm giving myself this corner marker and I'm going to just keep um, reloading my brush with black and white and if it goes too white on you don't worry about it you'll have the opportunity to make it a little bit um, darker when we do the when we do the other um, details to it so again top and to the right is where I'm adding this this line which can be considered a highlight or a marker of sorts but you definitely want to be able to see it so make sure that you have enough of the white on your brush and then as I get over to these ones I'm going top and to the left it could I guess in essence still be top and to the right but I know the way that I've got these keys going it's going to be much easier if I have it top and to the left and you'll see why in a second and on this one I don't really have much um, I don't I can't see the end of that one so I don't even really need to do anything for that one so then I'm gonna wash my brush wash and dry my brush and now what I'm gonna do is I am going to create the rest of the key with just black paint to start so I'm just taking black paint and in essence I'm really just taking the key and making it travel up into this never never land up and through here and you can make that top portion I think I need a little water I'm using a touch of water in my black too I like to have a nice smooth um, paint stroke so again these keys are going to be getting bigger or closer to you as the viewer so they'll be skinny up top and then they get wider down here so where I'm in essence going from on these ones that one was pretty simple but these ones I'm in essence going from the, the top um, right of these two and the bottom left these ones might just go straight back and then these ones it's going to be the bottom right and the top left so you'll see how I'm going to do this so I'm going to go from the top left hand corner you can start up top or down bottom wherever it's easier for you but your goal is to meet that top right something like that and then the bottom left so again I want it nice and slender up at the top like this and then it's going to meet that bottom corner and you just paint the key in black make sure that you leave that little corner marker that you have and you paint the rest of it in with black like this then I'm going to go ahead and do the next one so I think I have to reposition my body a little bit so again I'm going from up here I want to meet this bottom left hand corner and if you can keep some of that um, white keys showing in between that's great so I got this going down to this bottom left hand corner I overshot that a little bit but that's all right and then I'm gonna go ahead and get it also to meet the top right hand corner on this one and then I will fill in that little space leaving my highlighted corner marker like that and I'm gonna go right on to the next one so this one I probably am not gonna have much because I'm gonna most likely just go from the, those top little edges because it is almost straight on so I wouldn't necessarily see much of the side so this is just gonna kind of travel right up the center I almost just stuck my hand way in the wet paint so something like that I might smooth it out just a little bit definitely um, bracing myself with my pinky because of my shaky hand and of course you will definitely um, probably sit and tweak them until they're as perfect as you want them to be so the next one I'm going from the bottom right and the top left 
and I'm gonna I'm doing a similar type motion. So my goal is to get it nice and skinny up the top, so I can again whatever um, marker is the easiest for you to start it at. So something like that, and I'm trying to keep it um, for dimensional purposes in a similar angle as the as the um, separating key lines that we we did originally. It's gonna get a little bit wider. There we go. And then I'm just gonna color in that midsection. And again, once you get it on here, you might find that you wanna you wanna tweak them a little bit, but we are before we leave this step, we have a little bit of a highlight that we're gonna put on the top as well to give it a little bit more a little bit more dimension. So again, I'm gonna start bottom right hand corner. And travel up and top left hand corner and again I'm watching my neighboring lines so those lines that we had put into place for the um, for the separation of the white keys that helps to give me visual cues as to where this line needs to go as well and then again I'm just gonna fill in that little gap and again we're going for a surreal type painting so if yours is not mathematically perfect I would not be terribly concerned about it and then I'm just leaving my little corner edges visible because I'm gonna need those in a minute as a as another cue for me to put the um, the highlight on the top of the keys and then I've got I've just got these two left here so this one you might not see much on the top but if you can get a little sliver, great. If not, no worries. And again, I'm just kind of going for um, that goal of getting this key to travel up into that the, the beautiful flower that we're going to be putting on in a minute. And this is just, I'm using these other lines as my visual guide to get this to go up, up and away, something like that. And then I'm gonna color in this entire section with black paint. And again, you might not have much on the top but if you of this particular key, but if you do, great. Just color in a little sliver. And then I'm just gonna color this part in with black. And the next key um, is a fun one because we it hides behind the one that we're working on right now so you'll see how that's how that's gonna work out I just want to make sure that I get this one to go all the way up and away like we've got the other ones so again this is one of those steps that you you get your groove you might have wanted to um, do it in pencil first it or just go for it like I did with my with my paintbrush and then I have this last one. So this one's gonna kind of hide behind this one. I'm gonna use this line here as my visual guide. So I'm gonna do this to this bottom left-hand corner. And then I'm gonna use the, the top of here as my guide to travel up. Cause I want this to almost just hide behind there. So I can't really, I don't have much on this left-hand side, there's really, at the angle it's at, I wouldn't really need to start there. So I'm gonna start from um, this upper right hand corner and I'm just going to get it to, to travel up, up and away. And it's probably going to um, hide mostly behind this one, but it might end up covering this whole edge of the hill. So, or a hill, I guess that's what I'm calling it. It's a, it's a surreal daffodil piano hill. <laughs> so something like that. And then I'm just gonna color in this entire section. So I did not give myself a cue in through here with a light line, but you'll have the um, information of this corner and this corner will be the edge to that particular key. So, or you can leave a little sliver of unpainted um, canvas in between to so you know exactly where that, that marker is. We're gonna put a highlight on it in a minute, but just in case you um, are nervous to lose that, 
that informational piece. So now that I've got them all colored in black, what I'm going to do, I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to put a, a highlight on the top of them with black and white. So the tops are going to be kind of flat and the highlight is coming from my light source. So with some black and white on my brush, I'm going to start over here and I am giving myself a little highlight on the top. So black and white on my brush. The brightest part I'm going to have in this corner here and I'm going to take it and I'm giving myself a bright spot on the top of each key. So something like this and it almost kind of just fades up into into the into the daffodil tree or the daffodil bouquet. So like this, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a highlight on the top of here and then you can just pull it back. And if you feel like you've done too much, just bring a little bit more black onto your brush. This is just meant to be a visual um, bit of information that makes them look a, a, a bit more three-dimensional. So this one, I'm just going to be having this front part with the highlight. So I just put my black and white and I'm just going to kind of pull it up until it almost fades into that area. So again, my brightest part is at this this corner. So you can just pull that up and then give yourself a bit more of a highlight in through here. And you don't even have to go super high up. Wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. So black and white, give yourself this little corner and then add a bit more of a highlight on that front of the key or the front top of the key. And then just bring this up like that. And then we just have these two over here. So this one's going to be this corner here. It's going to give you the highlight to that one. And again, this is just the sliver of the top of it. And if you feel like you really want something in this corner, just bring a little bit of gray down into that corner. That will help you to keep that separating um, visual effect. You could even, if you feel like this is showing a lot from the light source, you could add a bit of a highlight in through here. So again, you can really steer the, um, the intensity of it looking like a photograph by, by putting those, those brighter highlights. Same thing with here. If I feel like this would catch a bit of that light source, I can certainly put a little bit more of that highlight in through here. And then we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your black keys in place, you can put your small brush away in your water cup or wherever you'd like. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our stems and our grass. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors I'm using are brown, green, and yellow. So I'm gonna start with just brown and green on my brush and I'm gonna start with the main stems for the flowers. So these daffodil flowers typically have a pretty straight stem like a straight stem and then it bends a little bit before it gets to the actual flower part. So that's how I'm gonna do the actual stems. And then when I go for the grass, it's gonna be really fun and carefree. So I'm starting with just green and brown on my brush. I'm gonna have one coming somewhere in through here. Oh, and I'm gonna be painting it right into and merging it with this, with the piano keys themselves. So you'll see how this is gonna go. So I think I'm gonna have maybe one in through here. This one, I'm gonna have a big flower here, so you're not actually gonna see this um, stem bending. Then I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a big one coming up in through here. So this one, you'll see the actual stem bending a little bit. So I'm gonna go maybe somewhere out like that and then I will bring it back down like this. And I'm gonna have these main stems of the bigger flowers that I'm doing, maybe about a quarter of an inch wide. You could certainly have yours thinner or thicker, whatever works for you. I am using quite a bit of paint on my brush right now just so I can have a nice thick area. I'm gonna um, bump this, this little part that's gonna meet my 
flower out just a bit on this particular one. So just get it something like that. Make sure that I've got this little bump of Rooney where it bends a bit. There we go. That looks good. And I I pay a little bit more attention on the, on the main ones that I'm doing, and then when I when I go for the littler ones, it won't be um, too too much involvement. So I'm going to do another one over here. This one I I don't think you. Well, maybe we'll see a little bit of that bend, something like that. And then this one's going to just kind of merge right into my piano keys. Oh, I guess I got rid of that little bend. That's all right. Uh, and then I'm going to do, let's see, I think I'm going to have another little one coming in through here. I'm going to have a couple of tiny ones off in the distance over here. So again, right now I'm just working on where I want my flower stems to go. And in a minute when I am done with those I'm going to be super carefree with where I want all of my grass to go but I'm paying a little bit more attention because I want some of these to be in strategic spots to to give myself some good balance throughout the painting so that's why I am taking a little bit more care and attention on these ones and you can see I'm giving them that little bit of a of a bend uh, where before it's going to hit the flower part I think I'm going to have a couple over in through here and then that's pretty much I think all where I want the actual flower stems to be. So now I'm going to be super carefree when it comes to my grass so to speak. So I'm going to have maybe a big piece of grass in through here, give myself a bit more green. I'm still right now only working with green and brown. I will be um, utilizing the yellow in a few minutes, but right now I am just utilizing green and brown. So that way it gives it a nice, almost a, a darker, more solid base to it before I start adding those highlights on. I want my this all to look kind of like it's merging up into my flower. So right now I'm just using green and brown and I'm doing just these little squiggly marks down here at the base providing myself with um, enough of a distance for those the flowers themselves when I go to put those on there. So again just green and brown is where I'm still working with right now and I, I'm not doing anything fancy for the grass. I'm really just kind of bringing it along the piano keys and then just making it really messy come, coming up off of them. So I'm, I'm utilizing the wetness of the paint to provide me with some softer areas or some um, more kind of see-through type areas. I suppose if you wanted there to be individual pieces of grass, you could certainly do that. Um, and take a little bit more time and, and care and attention. But I am just going for almost like an out of focus type look in through this background um, where it's meeting the, the actual keyboard itself. And again, you can certainly make yours with little individual pieces and stuff. And now that I've got the green and the brown on there, I'm just gonna start picking up some yellow without washing my brush and incorporating a bit of yellow into my stems, into the grass a bit. Maybe I've got a, a bigger piece coming out in through here. You could certainly use a bit of white as well if you wanted to add even more um, of a sunshiny kind of look to it. I will probably utilize a bit of um, white when I go to, to put on my, my final little details. But right now I'm just utilizing a bit of yellow on that brush. And then we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your pieces of grass and stem all nice and fully realized, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our daffodils. So I'm going to be using yellow 
and white on my brush at the same time. You could certainly pre-mix yourself like a little bit of a lighter yellow, but I like to have the diversity in the colors, so I'm gonna use both on my brush at the same time. These flowers have, um, the top portion of them is almost like an upside down bell that has little ruffled edges along the side, and then they have these big petals at the bottom of that bell. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to make my bell portion first and then I'll put the petals oh, around that. So I'm going to do one in this vicinity. This was one of my stems in through here. I'm going to go maybe about a half of an inch to an inch away from that bell or the stem itself to make my bell. My bell is going to be almost like a little bit of a horseshoe kind of at the bottom, almost like a U. And then as I come up towards the top of it that I'm going to be flicking out the edges of it. So it gets a little bit more narrow before it starts to spread out. And again, yellow and white are on my brush. And then the edges are going to be kind of ruffled. So I'm just going to make myself these uneven little edges to the exterior of this particular little bell and then I'm going to color it in with my yellow and my white on my brush at the same time. So again, what's gonna happen is some of these are gonna be a little bit more yellow, some of them are gonna have a little bit more lightness to them. They will have a bit of diversity in them, which to me makes it look a little bit more realistic. So I think I'm gonna just bump that little part out a bit more. I'm gonna put my bottom petals on it and I want these petals to be pretty darn large. And I think there's maybe six petals um, on the bottom. I could be I could be off on it, but I think there's six. So I and they're going to be pretty big. Think of them almost as big if they were closed up. They'd almost take up the height of the um, of the actual bell part. I know I'm probably not doing accurate terminologies for this, but I, 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 it's what it looks like to me. So I'm going to bring this one all the way over to this one. And then I think I'm going to have a big one coming down in through here. So again, yellow and white. I'm going to have this one coming in this direction. And if I went over my stem a little bit, that's okay. I'm going to have a big one coming over in through here and these are just really big long like floppy kind of petals they're pretty darn huge and they're just they're just they're thin and delicate too which is it just kind of interesting to me i'm gonna have one coming behind here maybe maybe poke that out just a little bit more and we're gonna add dimension to these later, so don't worry if yours don't look super awesome right now. I'm gonna have one coming out over in through here as well. This is gonna be on the other side of the flower. So I've got that one in through there. And once we get these main ones taken care of, the littler ones are gonna be much easier to do because we're just gonna give the impression of them. So I'm gonna start this one with my bell. Again, I'm gonna start a little bit away from my stem, so maybe about a half of an inch or an inch or so. So maybe something like this. And I'm gonna do this one in a bit of a different direction. So I'm gonna have this one going like this and then just kind of steer it out towards these corners. Once I've got that, I'm gonna give it a really rippled edge along the top. So I'm just kind of poking my brush out, giving these little um, bits of information. These petals are just so delicate and like little pieces of fabric or something along the edge. They're really pretty cool. This one I'm going to have kind of in an open fashion. So I think I'm going to bump out a little bit more in through this area. There we go. And then I'm just going to color this whole um, bell section with my yellow and white on my brush at the same time so I can get good coverage. The white helps to make it so it's not so see-through. We definitely have much more to do on these flowers, but using that white will help you to make it so it's not so see-through, especially if you had some darkness behind it or something from your sky. 
And then I'm going to um, do the petals coming out of this one. So I'm going to have maybe a, a big one coming in through here. This one's going to be a little bit wider like that. And then I've got one, maybe we'll have this one in through here. This one's going to be at a little bit different of an angle than we did this one. So I'm going to have my um, petals more kind of off to the sides. We've got this one maybe going in through here. Oops, I have a little a little bristle stuck to my to my canvas. That's all right. We'll just paint right over it. And then I've got maybe a big one coming in through here. This will be the one that's kind of coming all in the front. So I guess something like that. And whenever I'm doing petals, I, my brain consciously is telling me where are they coming out of? So if this one's coming out of here, it's coming towards me. So it's gonna look shorter than the ones that are on the side. So I try and keep those um, that information in my head as I'm creating these shapes. So I, I'm just trying to tap into my logical side and say okay well if, if it's growing out of here how is it going to bend and 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 be shaped and again if you bump into your your stem don't worry about it we can we can rectify that later so i've got another one coming in through here so i think this one i'm going to have a little bit of a different angle i'm going to keep go a little bit away from my stem so something like this and kind of kick it out over here and over here and then give myself those little rippled edges along the top color it in and then I'm gonna go ahead and do my my little petals coming off the side and again as we get into these smaller ones it's gonna be a little simpler you know to do the the information or the you know the petals and such so we've got that one and then I'd have a tiny little one over in through here that we put a stem for. So this one I'm gonna have just, and again, right now, now that I'm getting into these smaller ones, I'm really just thinking, okay, I need a little, a little puffy top. I need a couple of the impression of some little petals coming down at the base, and that's all I'm gonna do. And same thing when I get to here, yellow and white is gonna be my my um, colors, I do my little bell, I do my little pieces at the top, and then I do my petals coming out the bottom. So you'll, you'll get your rhythm once, once you've um, established how that shape goes, you might just kind of cruise right along with, with um, the rest of them. And let's see, I've got a couple tiny ones into here. So again, I'm just gonna give the impression of them because they're so tiny when they come when they're down in through here just a little wider top maybe a couple um, a little wide base to to give the viewer the information that there is maybe some um, some petals at the bottom and when we add the shadows and the highlights later that's definitely going to help sell the story of these ones that are off in the distance being a little bit more um, natural as well and then I've got the ones that I want to actually look like they're a little bit in focus. I'm pretty good with, with where they're at right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm really just gonna add a bunch of little yellow dots all, all along the rest of the area because I want there to appear to be a full field of daffodils. So right now I'm, I've got yellow and white on my brush and I'm just kind of tapping it here and there to give you the impression that there's other little daffodils maybe sneaking up around um, the bend of the hill. And then we are going to be using, let's see, what are we gonna use next? We're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your daffodils, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the shadows on our piano keys. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using brown paint. So for me, a shadow is meant to look like 
the surface it's on only a little bit darker. So I know that my brown is nice and translucent, so I can get away with using that. If your brown is more on the thicker side or you've gone with more of a whiter key and wanna go with a gray color or something like that, feel free to alter that a little bit. But I am just gonna be using brown paint with a little bit of water on my brush. So the first one I'm gonna tackle is the shadow that's gonna be right underneath this edge of the keys. So I am just going to be doing maybe about a quarter inch of uh, brown paint along, the, along this edge. And I am having my shadow be what I refer to as on the cleaner side, which means it's got some nice solid edges to it along, um, along its edge, which you can have a couple of different types of shadows. You can have shadows that have soft edges or you can have shadows that have a clean edge like I'm doing. The difference is going to be how far or close that light source is. So I am just making mine with a little bit cleaner of an edge because that's what I perceive that they would be um, on this particular object. So I've got that. Now I've got to do my shadows for my keys. My light source is in the top right hand corner. So my shadow is going to be on the bottom and left of, of these ones. And then it's it, actually, it's probably going to be bottom and left on, on most of them. So I'm going to just give myself a little line in through here with my brown paint. And the brown is going to be see-through, so I'm going to be able to see those lines in between, the, the separator lines that we put for the keys earlier. So those are, will be visible right through my right through my brown paint. But if you're, again, if yours is thicker and you can't, you're painting over that line and it disappears for you, you can certainly just add, add it back on top. But for me, I know that mine is going to be very visible, so... And again, I'm just kind of following, following what I feel the, the shadow would do. Uh, if, if you're just learning how to do shadows, I do like to recommend that people practice with your own setup. Like you can take a, a, a couple of objects, put them on a table, put them next to a, a wall and just use a, a lamp and just kind of move that lamp around and you can see what direction the shadows go. It's a fun exercise to just um, get your brain operating properly and understanding what happens when um, the light source is hitting a particular object because the shadows can be long or narrow, they can be dark, they can be lighter based on where that, where that light source is coming from and how far away it is and stuff. So. It's fun to it's fun to learn these kind of things, but once you once you've kind of grasped the idea of it, it's um, it's fun to just execute all of your head because you you've got the gist of how it's going to work. So this one I think would have a little bit of a shadow on this left hand side, and I'm traveling right on top of my black right now because. Um, my brush is, is making me do that, but I know that it's gonna be see-through anyways. And if I needed to paint over um, some of that black again, I would. I think there'd be a little bit of a shadow in this crevice in through here. So I'm just bringing that shadow down like that. And again, if you feel like you need to alter things, maybe there's a little shadow up here. I just am putting them where I feel that they, where they would be cast from that beautiful light source. So we've got this one in through here, and then I have one more on that last key over here. This one's gonna be pretty big. And this, I guess, would be a great time to clean up your piano key edges if you feel like they need any assistance in being um, visually as perfect as you want them to be or as painterly as you'd like them to be. And then, oh, I missed one. Look at that. I just kind of skipped right over this one. All right, so I need this one right here because I was, yeah, I don't know, my brain just skipped over this one, I guess. So this one's gonna go right in front. And I am also trying to line up or 
um, get these from one key to the next. I want it to look like they belong together because a piano keyboard is so perfect. Every, every key is lined up exactly with the other. So I'm trying to consciously make sure that they, you know, make sense next to each other. And then let's see, we are going to be using this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your piano key shadows on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the highlights on our piano keys. So I'm using my small brush. Your piano keys might be white at this point, and if so, you're not going to be able to add a highlight. <laughs> but if you have them a little bit on the tanner side like I do, I'm just going to be using my small brush, white paint. I want to highlight um, and get rid of, I can see my pencil mark on this side. So I'm just taking a bit of white paint and making sure that this is really nice and vibrant in this corner here. And I'm just rubbing that paint into the tan color that I had originally um, used to create the base coat for the, um, for the keys. And I'm also going to be doing a highlight. I, in my head, the edges of these keys are catching the, um, the light from the light source. So I am going to be putting a highlight on the edges, the front edges of the key. This will help to add more perspective to it and it will help to, of course, tell the story of how bright your sunshine is. So really I'm just taking white paint at this point and I'm just doing a, this was, this area was where I um, spent a little bit more time, but these ones I might just be able to get away with doing a bit of a white line. It can be right at the edge or right a, a touch away from the edge a bit because I know that the edge of a piano key has a bit of a rounded um, edge. So if you want this to be even more realistic, you can put it just back just a tiny bit from the edge. So. Once you've got that, if you need to do a little bit of blending with that tan color, feel free to do so. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your bright edge on those, on those keys, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're adding the shadows to our flowers. I'm going to be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are brown, rust, and yellow. And how I'm going to do this is I'm not necessarily, I am concerned about the light source for these shadows, but I'm more concerned about the contours of the flowers themselves, where they bend, where they dip in, where a petal is. That's where in my head those shadows are going to be going as well as on the opposite side of my light source. So you got shadows coming in many different directions. So we'll take this one for instance, or for example, the flower itself will have a little ruffled edge around the top. So I know I'll get, I'll have a shadow underneath that edge as well as inside the top. I'd have a shadow in essence at the bottom of this bell part where it meets my petals. And I might have a couple of shadows underneath some of those petals. Same thing with here. I'll have shadows here. I'll have shadows inside the center, underneath the ruffled edge and maybe on some of those petals. I don't wanna to go too, too dark. So I will always probably be using yellow in my combination as well. And that's going to help me to get it to blend in with the flower itself. So I'm going to start with a touch of rust, a touch of brown and a touch of yellow all on my brush at the same time. And I most likely will just be alternating those colors or using them simultaneously, simultaneously with one another. I'm going to start with this one over here so you can kind of get the gist of what I'm going to do. This is where my shadowy area is, in my opinion, at the bottom. Instead of picking up more of the brown and the rust in order to get it to blend in with the yellow, I'm going to pick up yellow with my dirty brush. While this paint is still wet, I can just kind of almost pull it up 
those edges and you can always use a paper towel if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush to just wipe it off in that blending kind of process. And we will be doing highlights as well in, in a coming step. So don't feel that if this isn't perfectly blended at this point that, that the, the deal is over. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to add more to it in a, in a little bit. So again, I'm reloading my brush with rust brown and yellow to get a shadow. I'm gonna have a little shadow underneath this rippled edge of the, of the flower. So I'm adding a little bit of ripple in through there and then I'm gonna just blend it in with my yellow. So I just picked up a bit more yellow just to make sure that I've got this blended in the way that I want to. I'm gonna have a little center to this flower as well. So rust, yellow, and white is what I picked up on my brush. And I'm just gonna add a bit of a, a little center in through there. And I don't really need this to blend in too, too much because I know that I'm gonna have some highlights and stuff on there. I want a little bit of a shadow between some of these petals. You don't have to put it between all of them, just maybe where one would in essence maybe rest upon another one or maybe um, coming out of that center a little bit. So you don't, you don't need a whole heck of a lot when it comes to the shadows on the petals. So I get them on there and then I just picked up some yellow paint on my brush, I'm picking up a touch more rust. I feel like I want this one to be a bit darker over in through here. I feel like this one is casting a shadow upon that one. So we're gonna make this one a bit darker in through here. And then I'm just continuing to pick up yellow paint in order to get these shadows to just blend and do what I want them to do. And again, I know that I'm gonna be utilizing um, the highlights in a, in a bit to add more dimension to this, but this is where I'm starting. I'm gonna go next to this one. So I'm reloading my brush with rust, brown, and yellow. And again, I'm using these multiple colors on my brush at the same time because I like the diversity that um, it gives when it's, um, when it's working its way off of your brush onto the, onto the object. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel right now, picking up some yellow to get this shadow as it's um, drying to blend in with the rest or the main area of that, of that flower. So something like that. I'm gonna do my bit of a shadow up at the top underneath where I'm gonna call the lip of the flower. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a wiggly line in through here wiping my brush off on my paper towel just to bring, pull this down just a little bit. I'm gonna pick up some yellow now and get that shadow to blend in even more with the, with the actual main section of the flower. This one's gonna have a bigger center section than I had for that one. So yellow, uh, yellow rust and brown are my colors. This one I think I'm gonna have for this one's gonna be pretty big, this center area. So we're gonna have this one come in something like that. And then I wanna just make sure that it blends in the, to me, this is gonna be a clean edge here because it's that's where the, the flower is folding out towards us. And then it would blend into this upper area. So I didn't mention that on that one, but I'm mentioning it now, so hopefully it'll make sense to you. So we've got this like this, and I'm just continuing to pick up a little bit of yellow paint so I can get this to blend with that more um, vibrant area. And that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna move down towards the petals on this one. So in through here, yellow, brown, and rust are the colors on my brush. And I'm not gonna have two too much of the shadow in through in through these, maybe a little bit there, maybe a little bit on this side, maybe a on, on, little bit under there, a little bit here, a little bit there. And then once I've got my shadows on, just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and then blending it in with the neighboring yellow. So that way we've got some, some good, um, tra a nice transition from one area to the next. 
And if your paint dries in between, like I put this paint here and went and did some other stuff and it dried a little bit, you can really just, if you need to, pick up more of that shadowy color to keep it wet while you're um, trying to get it to blend in. That's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one, yellow, rust, and brown. I'm gonna put my shadowy area down below. Make sure that it is blended in with my yellow. So I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a little yellow. And you can see I'm doing them all pretty systematically for the bigger ones, the more um, in focus ones. But in a minute when I get to those smaller ones down below, I will be much more carefree with my, with my paint application. So just getting this little shadow underneath this lip. Maybe this one's got a bit of a interior in through here. That's looking cute. We've got a couple along these petals just so you can see a little bit of separation happening between the petals. I don't even think I really need to pick up any yellow on there. And then I've got a couple more down through here. So these, when I get down to these smaller ones, I'm probably not going to be... Um, needing as much detail so i'm i'm just going to really go i'm you know shadow here shadow underneath here maybe a little shadow between some of those petals this one in here i don't even think i need anything but just carrying like that rust color that you're using here if you carry it into a couple of the bottom flowers even though you're not adding much detail just carrying that color down is going to continue to make these ones look more realistic as well. So if the flowers are too small to add the full on detail, just carry a little bit of the that shadowy color down into the um, into a couple of the flowers and that's going to help to sell the story. And then again, I've got just a couple more over here adding my shadow down at the bottom, maybe a little bit underneath that little rippled edge. And then I don't really have much on these ones to do, so I'm just maybe picking up a little bit of the rust and the brown and just adding a couple of little tweaks here and there, little dots here and there. And then I'm gonna use my small brush for the next step. So once you've got that accomplished, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the highlights onto our beautiful flowers. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using mostly white, but I'll probably end up using some yellow as well. And if I feel like I need to do any tweaking on my shadows, maybe I'll use some of those colors as well, but predominantly it's gonna be white, a little bit of yellow. So this is where I am certainly considering my light source. So my light source is over there, so I wanna, catch the edges of all of my petals that are going to be closest to the to the um, sun or where I feel would be catching it the most. So like on this particular one, I realize those top edges are closest to the sun, but for a three-dimensional effect, the top of this side of these petals would catch the um, the the light from that light source. So that's where I'm going to predominantly put the white paint is on this edge. I do know that these are ripply type of um, petals. I don't even know if it's one petal in this. I think it is one petal in the center of a daffodil. It, it's, this is one consistent piece. I hope I'm right. I think I'm really right on that one. And then it's got these six along the edges. So I put that brightness in through there. And then if I want, I can add a, a couple of little pops in through those edges as well. I definitely want a big brightness over here where this is going to catch that um, sunshine as well as over in through here. Wherever I feel like it's rounded and leaning towards that sun, and if you're not able to get the it to blend in with the neighboring yellow, that's when you start to pick up a touch of yellow on your brush as well. Or if you have an area that is just needing a second coat, it's not um, it's not vibrant enough for you or whatever, you can certainly add 
a bit more of that yellow. I feel like this petal is leaning over this way towards us and it would probably be the lightest in through here, catching that bit of sunshine. So I'm gonna put my highlight in through here and then I'm gonna just rub it out into the neighboring area of that particular flower or that particular petal. So you can keep elevating that, that curve of the petal by making that one area that's popping out the most, continuing to make that brighter and brighter. And that will tell the viewer that that is a rounded object and that it's um, certainly the closest to us. I can see my stem underneath this petal, so I really wanna get rid of that. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a bit of white in through here. I might have to come back to this petal in a minute, but that was driving me crazy. So white acts as like a primer coat. So if you have a, a see-through spot like this, you can always add a bit of white on top of it to provide you with a stable um, under color and then let it dry for a minute and come back and put your color on top of it. So I'm really kind of just going one petal at a time. This one I feel would be the lightest over on this top left hand side. So that's where I'm adding my white and I want it to look like it's curved. So if you use a curved brush stroke as well, that will help to again, speak to the, the form of that object. And then I have this one in through here, so I feel like that that one would get the most highlight up here on the top left, and maybe in through here, maybe it's curved over a little bit, so I'll leave this tip a little bit darker with a little bit more of the yellow, and I'll put this brightest spot in through here. And again, you can play with um, telling the viewer where what stuff is just by placing that highlight in a specific um, spot. I want to just get this to blend a little bit more so just adding a touch of that and if you if this disappears next to this you can always pick up a bit I just picked up rust to add that bit of a um, more dimensional element you can also pick up a little bit of brown if you don't feel like your shadow is making it pop enough so you can keep tweaking this as you see fit. I'm gonna move on to my next flower, which is over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Where do I feel that that light source would hit the most? Definitely along this edge in through here. So I'm adding a whole bunch of white along this edge. It's just totally catching that sunshine right around this edge, as well as maybe in through here to sell the story of this kind of tipping over. Um, and having a little bit of roundness to it. And then I'll get a little bit on these edges. Maybe they're catching the, it from the other side. And I definitely want to make sure that I have good coverage. So I'm noticing that I have a couple of areas up and through here that are not fully painted. So I'm just adding a bit of yellow and white because this would probably catch a little bit of that sunshine as well. And yeah, that's looking pretty. I'm adding some more yellow to my brush. So again, my colors are yellow and white predominantly, making sure that I've got these bits of highlights that are catching the area from the, the sun. Maybe this has a couple, yeah. I like the sunshine kissing the edges of these these flowers. It just, it brings them to life. You know, you 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 can put the shapes on and you can get it to, to look nice and you know realistic with the shape. Oh, you might need an additional um, coverage in the center here. If you want that to pop out a little bit more, use your yellow and white. And if you want it to have a bit more dimension, you can add a bit of a highlight in through there. But like I, I digress for a second here. <laughs> what I was saying a minute ago was, once you start adding these final highlights, oh, these flowers, they just come to life and it makes me so happy because, you know, you work at all the other details and getting everything into place. And then it's like, this is almost like the icing on the cake when you, when you put these little tiny bits of information. And I spend a little bit extra time on these, um, on these larger flowers because of course they are, they are part of my my focal point on here so I might end up taking a bit more time and care on these than I do on the smaller ones 
I'm going to go ahead and work on these petals here. Definitely going to catch some light in through there, maybe at the tip of this one. And then this one maybe catches it a little bit in through here. I have a good amount of white paint on my brush right now, so these are going to stay wet for a second for me. Going to catch this one a little bit on the edge. And then once I've got my highlights on there, I'm going to just start to rub them in and get them to blend with the neighboring yellow paint. And again, if I needed to pick up more yellow paint in order to make it um, blend in, you can certainly do that. But you might be able to just get away with going with just the white. So depending on how translucent or your paint is or how perfect you want your petals to be, totally up to you. I just added a bit of yellow and rust on my brush to make sure I get these edges to close off the way that I want them to. And then I've got these two little petals over here to contend with, so a bit of white. So again, mostly I'm using yellow and white, but there have been a couple of areas where I've gone into my shadow colors, my rust and my brown, just again to make sure that I've I've done everything that I want to do and that I've got it to look as blended in as I want or as complete as I want. I've got this little guy in through here. So just using some white paint to get those highlights in the places where I feel that they would be. I think we'd have a little bit in through here, a little bit over here. And again, as we're going into these smaller ones, it's not going to take as much effort. Just pop in those, those bright little colors. That's looking pretty good. I think I need a little bit more yellow on my brush just to make sure, again, I've got this um, fully painted. I just added a bit more rust as well because I feel like my interior of this is not as complete as I want it to be. So I'm just tweaking it as I go. And again, you might find that some of these take two seconds to do and others take a little bit longer. Yeah, that's looking pretty. Maybe, maybe just a touch more, touch more down here. Yeah, there we go. And if you want those, those petals to separate from one another, doing those little separation between them will help to sell that story. And then I've got the ones down in through here. So a little bit of white on my brush. And again, these are, these are going to be a lot less um, detail. I'm really just kind of doing a series of polka dots right now. Dots, dots and dashes is what I'm doing. I'm just adding these, these little bits of sunshine just throughout my grassy area. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, hitting the um, more prominent flowers that I have that have a little bit more detail on them. I think this one needs a little more yellow on it too. It feels a bit pale to me. So I'm adding a bit more yellow on this one. Yeah, there we go. Just needed that one to pop a bit. Now I'm gonna add, I got my white back on my brush now. So I'm just, I'm doing my series of polka dots right now. And this would be a great time if you felt that you needed to add any more grass. You could add little highlights to pieces of your grass. This is definitely one of those steps that you could you can utilize the um, the impressionistic style that we're doing in this uh, in these flowers down below. You could certainly utilize that for your grass. If you again, if you wanted more blades of grass to show or more highlights, feel free to feel free to adapt this dot and dash technique to those as well. And again, I'm just kind of getting this little guy to have a bit more detail with my white, giving some of these petals to kind of pop out of the page. And then we're gonna just do a couple on these over here. And then we have one final little step left to go. And it's gonna be with this small brush. So once you've got your beautiful detail on all of your daffodils, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right, but I kind of don't want to sign this one because I feel like it's gonna take away, but let's see. So we'll make it really discreet. I'm gonna go with my small brush. 
I'm gonna go with brown paint and I think I'm just gonna make it look like dirt or um, stems or something in my grass. So I'm gonna do just my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or whatever you'd like to be your identifying mark. Yeah, there we go. I'm just making it kind of squiggle into my grass here. <laughs> so, so you almost can't tell that I did it, but I really did do it. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful musical springtime image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.